no points for guessing who's next. They used to have their lipstick on. Are they wearing lipstick today? No, but they still have the hair up in the air. Then they were close to the water line, but where are they now? Well, they're here in the studio. Will you welcome John and Edward? We're here just like old times here <laughs> with Derek great. and Amy. Derek, it's great to be here. It's great to have you back. Yes. Derek, we've been talking non-stop through the ad breaks, Kevin. It's really cool to be back on your show and say hi to everybody. Where have you been? We actually went to Mars. Don't tell all the other celebrities who paid like two million to go to Mars because we literally got this, like this special new teleporting thing to Mars. Didn't we had a- yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff's changed. Okay, like basically we went to Australia and they didn't know anything about us. And then we went there, said, "Hey, yo, what's up?" And then all our fans requested all these TV shows. So we we're kind of like on all their morning shows, and we have a tour in November. And literally all the Irish over there were like, "What's Jebber doing here?" So then we went there. It's totally we- jettified anyway. Yes. And then we went to Canada, and then they didn't have anything. They had no clue about us, so we just stormed. In there, we we're like, yo, what's up? It's Jed. Basically, Jed, we've been all over the place, okay? I feel like Christopher Columbus, okay? I, feel, I mean, I went to Ireland, I don't feel like, like whoa, I haven't seen John there in the newspaper, like advertising, like the new. People kind of thought it was all over. Yeah, because it's kind of crazy, because like, you don't need to be in the newspaper all the time, because I know me and John, we do stuff every day, like it's like non-stop, but then but I feel like me and it's, cool thought, to take, it's cool to take just a break to kind of chill out and get to like know yourself and like write songs and... Because Derek, I feel like me and Eric, like we've been going like doing stuff kind of here and there and it's been real spontaneous like oh we're going to do this we're going to do that so I feel like me and I have really sat down and we've had our fans for like the last four years doing this so we know kind of know can feel and know what our fans want and what's next for us so we really wanted to sit down and take everything seriously and not just kind of like kind of because <laughs> everything everything to this point is just like okay let's do this okay let's, let's go do that uh, uh, yeah so but now it's like let's sit down and actually do this right and actually like get everything together and actually make an image and stuff that we actually want to be out there because I feel like before it was like we'd songs that weren't 100% about it, that we were like oh because like, do you get me like we want to and Derek, make- I feel like me and Edward we got so much to offer I know we've had lipstick and people are like whoa Jared's been around for a while now but I feel like me and Edward um, we're just finding ourselves even musically and everything I know people are like do you saw us in X Factor and stuff like that and we've kind of grown and people have seen us growing up and developing and I feel like me and Edward we're just always learning and always progressing and wanting to develop so I feel like, like, like John, John like learned John like learned guitar and everything we did like acoustic covers and when people and like, we had concerts we had our concerts in um just different concerts here in our I so think I think like last week we had like our fourth year concert in the INEC. Like literally, it's like okay, we're back. <laughs> And were there many people there? Yes. Yeah, there's always crazy fans in the airport and everything. I don't even, I don't, they didn't know we were coming here today. It's on YouTube. It's all on YouTube. You can check it out. Everyone's screaming. I know. We used to have time. to put barriers up when you were coming in. <laughs> you still do. <laughs> but not as many. <laughs> so we wonder, has has the love of Jedward trickled away? Or, no, or, I don't or, think so. Or, 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 no, hang on. Or, or, or have you just found a new ground to play on? And you're mentioning Australia. And I you're mentioning... Canada. No, no, uh, forget about Ireland. We're always going to be in Ireland doing stuff, always, because I feel like um, people in Ireland are real loyal. They're not, it's not, you can, all, everyone's just always all having a good time. It's a real good community. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, sometimes in other countries, it's all like things are going on, things are going on. But I feel like in Ireland, it's a really good community with the people. Like, you know, like you say, you go to like different places and people look out for each other. Like, even like, our dog, like we found our, yeah, we thought later. Yeah, the story about the dog. We got an email during the week about this blind dog which had been rescued. And we were just about to look into it and see what we could do. And lo and behold, lo and behold. The dog belongs to you two guys. Yes. Tell, the dog the, tell everybody Toby. listening about this dog. This dog, okay, it's our dog. One of our, one of our dogs is called Toby. And we got this dog when we were like, um, we were nine. And we had the dog for quite a while. It's like 15 years old. It's our dog. And it had it through so much, so much Cause memories. Because we, we, we were filming in, we were filming in Oxford for like our TV show, Jared's Big Adventure. And basically we heard that our dog... That just like because there, there's like building going on in the house, so like basically the dog just got out some way. But then we f- and then we thought the dog was gone. We found out it was that, and then and then we found out the next day the people people had found the dog. We went to the pound, and then it wasn't in the pound. And like basically, like our aunt was like going around calling Toby and people, and then we heard that that they were onto Joe and Duffy. A couple had moved in to where we live, and they they found the dog mm. and they'd rearranged all the furniture in the house to for, accommodate the dog yes which is really nice yeah. come on you guys were going to do and a they, huge search on it like you guys they, we were going to try and find out who owned the dog yeah yes so anyway then it was reunited yesterday I believe or the day before basically our basically our, our cousin was calling out the dog's name one morning because we heard the dog bark you weren't even sure if it was Toby and then because his bark really he barks unique. a lot he barks a lot yeah it's his way of communicating kind of saying let me out of here I need to get into the next room or if he wants to get into the sitting room he just starts barking loads which we really like dogs we love dogs yeah we've we also so dogs. big dogs small dogs blind dogs but anyone watch, listening yeah it's really good that we got back the dogs what did you do with the rabbits 
Um, I Remember the rabbits in I Azerbaijan the, when you were out there representing Ireland at the Eurovision? You bought yes, two rabbits. What happened to the rabbits? The organizers, the organizers over in Eurovision, the people that were looking after us over there, they said that because we weren't able to get through the airport, mm. so then they said that they'd be like look after Euro and Vision. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of the rabbits, sorry. <laughs> anyway, they were th- that was back in the heady days when you were part of Louis. Yeah. Kind of um you were Louis' children nearly. He, Louis was your manager, but he's not your manager anymore. He's not, he's not my manager anymore right now. But, so um, what happens? Who manages you now? Is there uh, well right now um our mom's our manager, but we're we're um doing like new things. But I feel like me and John, like, we always Manage. We, we always, kind of, always keep. We our, always ran sorry. the whole show ourselves. We always did our own hair. We always did our own styling, our own everything. We have, like, Your like, styling we, is fantastic. Like, me and John, like we Thanks always Derek. keep. We always keep United front. Like we always bring the A game. We always do what know what we want to do. We like do always, we've always been, we've always had freedom to be and do what we want to do. You know, freedom like to do what we want to do. Normally, people like they have to, everything's all yeah, planned cause, cause and seen, stuff like we've that. We've seen so much like pop acts and people like, like, like I can't do that I can't do that and they're so restricted but there's so but much pe- we've always been able to do whatever we want like if we like want to do whatever we want to do we can do it but there's so, so much people that are like a face of a company or a big massive machine me and John have always just been organic it's never been like this and we, we haven't been signed into like I think some people have like signed their lives away like stuff like that they're signed into like so much contract and signed into so much things and stuff it's always been real simple me and Edward and I feel like now that we're real lucky you must have signed something I know it did but it was it was probably like one contract it wasn't like multiple contracts with a contract here a contract there it's real complicated and much stuff you can get tied into but we never got into that but other people are in that so it's good that we're not in and like that the situation thing about it is sometimes people don't even know own their name so me and John like Jedward, like we have it like trademarked and like, like Derek, could you country. imagine if someone owned your name, Derek Mooney? It's like, sorry, Derek Mooney, you're not allowed to go on radio. And you're like, no, <laughs> they wouldn't but I want, want to. to. <laughs> but I can tell you that every thought I have belongs to RTE. <laughs> 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 yeah, but not necessarily re- saying everything they want me to say, but anyway. <laughs> no, Derek, you're always yourself on radio. But Derek, it's, it's really good that me and John have the freedom to kind of do what we want all the time. Like, even me and John. Like, and even still, me and I were always, even over like the last few years, always, it's been a huge learning experience. Like just everything filming video TV radio like Derek, me and John like I think we were at Universal and we had like three albums and there was three album deal like we made eight like we made 12 music videos all by ourselves like we really kind of like we always put pictures out there we make our own music and videos still, still and your do. music videos are very good yeah, because we, I saw the one you yeah. made was it in Hong Kong yeah from Wardline we made fantastic. lipstick that was brilliant, yeah. Yeah. but no one no one actually goes did they actually make and that and even for lipstick we made that one time because a lot of artists say I had input but me and John are physically got the camera recorded it edited the music video gave it to the music stations like we've no so pro- really involved like we've no problem to call up Singapore and contact the radio station and tell them about our label a single or what we've been doing like we're not kind of like what do we do we know exactly all about the business we know exactly what you need to do you need to have all like we're, not, we're not like we're not like other people who are just being told to do this do that be here be there be there it's like oh I don't want to be there it's like we just want to do our stuff and like, it's like a big like, like things just don't happen like you can have the best album or the best song ever it's all about marketing it's all about being being like a strategic Derek, plan we've been working on loads of new music loads of new songs loads of we're writing songs we've done so many different types of songs and we're going to launch that and everyone will know about those songs because it's going to be launched properly I will send you the CD Derek do send me the send CD them. and we'll play it I'm surprised you just missed Ryan Turberty he was on I know Ryan, Ryan it's so weird because like you seem he like he probably would have nabbed you for the late late <laughs> It's like, sorry, we're here for Derek. Really exclusive. <laughs> well, it, it, they could have had you tomorrow, you know. I suppose they could have had you tomorrow. It's all good, it's all good. Um, tell me, so uh, your, mom is, your, your mom is managing you now, so she does all of the deals for you then? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing like all new deals and stuff as well, like new endorsements and stuff like that and yeah. whole new... I was going to ask you that. I mean, did you make... I don't want to talk about the rude subject of money because you've done very well. Let's be honest about it. I can see you, both of you are smiling now. So you've done <laughs> very, you've done very well. But uh, have you made most of your money not from singing, but kind of endorsements and TV presenting no, think, well, and I, appearances yeah. and stuff like that, rather than the singing aspect? But of Derek, it. the thing about it is that everything kind of leads onto the next thing. That like you can't just do an endorsement if you're not have a, if you don't have a song like everything kind of links on to the next thing like say every, you have to have like all different parts so and you, it's complicated because I, wa- I was watching a movie on TLC you know that girl group they had sold 10 million records and they were sold out tours all across the world and they had wouldn't, three Grammys or something like that like they, they had no their, money they were on their Grammy speech and they were like we sold 10 million records so we're lucky that we're not signed into any crazy 360 deals with labels and stuff like that because it kind of gets complicated then because you could because that's what I don't know it's complicated okay but yeah we're good we're fine. We have enough money to go into the shop and buy milk and bread. <laughs> well, I talk about 
<laughs> I'll talk to you more about shopping after the news with Eileen Dunn. The United Kingdom, a place of great beauty, rich in history. So who better to bestow this knowledge on future generations than... Jedward! The twins have decided to leave their megastar lifestyles behind to try and become the UK's best tour guide. Their challenge is simple. To visit our biggest attractions and compete with each other to give the best tour. Dear Jedward, in just 24 hours time, you will each have to give a group of tours a guided tour around the Tower of London. But we don't know anything about the Tower of London. At the end of the day, the tourists will be tested to see which of you has taught them the most. Whoever has given them the worst tour will have to face the stocks and prepare for a drenching <laughs> edit. If we don't get these facts right, then the tour will be a disaster. Yours is going to be a disaster. No. Mine's not. No. I'm going to win. Edit, I'm going to win you. Right now, they must find the experts and get the info. And who better to ask than one of the tower's famous beef eaters, otherwise known as a yeoman warder. What's a yeoman? Like, yeoman? Yo, 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 I am the Chief Yeoman Warder of Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London. I'm Edward Peter Anthony Kevin Patrick Grimes. And I'm John Paul Henry, Diana Richard Grimes, and together we are Jedward! Jedward! So that's your BBC TV series, which has really taken off. Yeah, it's, like... It's fantastic. I watched the whole series, or the whole episode before we came down here today, and I laughed my head off. It's terrific. Derek, it's so amazing because you're on the show and you're learning all these facts, going to all these real interesting places, and the next day you've got to give a tour of tours, a guide, and all these kids, and make it really fun and really, really exciting and get the facts across, and there's so much cool props and everything. Like, so, we've, we've got to open Tower Bridge and everything. We've done crazy things, and we've had, like, all... Like, we've been to mines, we've blown up, like... Quarries, everything. We've been to like where William Shakespeare was born. <laughs> We've been all over the place. But it's already spontaneous because literally, like, usually TV shows have a script. Me and John, literally, it's like, go in there, do your thing. Because me and John, like, we never know what's going to happen. And sometimes we come across really, really serious people that have to tell us serious stuff. And we're like, yeah, very interesting. But it was really good. We, we actually filmed the, the, the last episode of the third series, and that's going to be on in January. It's only on January. Because, Derek, the first series was five episodes, second series was five episodes, and we only filmed the third one, and that's ten episodes, because it's got huge ratings on BBC. Like, it's as big as, like, You're Blue bigger Peter. than Blue Peter. Yeah, it's getting, like, as bi as much viewerships, and even on the repeats. And even the repeats even still the get repeats, top five. Even the repeats still get, like, the top viewers of the thing because like all our fans really like watching it it's really good and it's like a show that everyone can sit down and watch it's like a fam family it's like a family show even if you don't know Jedward like because like we didn't do it's it like, like you know Home Alone you know Home Alone's like cl yeah. an all time classic it's like an all time classic show that you can play in 20 and guess years what, and guess the what? never go we went, the, we, we went to the Giants Causeway <laughs> we went to the Giants Causeway remember when you used to do Winning Streak and you were like let's go to Giants Causeway <laughs> and that little machine we actually went there yeah was, that's the closest we ever got there because remember the little machine used to go there and streak open, yeah, used to have to go open the thing it's like you just won 10,000 pounds but we actually went there and it was really good because the Giants Causeway it's so like uh, there's a lot of stuff to learn and we went to the rope bridge John was so scared of the rope bridge John nearly had a yeah. breakdown on the rope bridge I'm like, okay, I'm I'm okay. okay. I was by like, the time at the end I was dancing on the rope bridge yeah because it's like, it's like a rope bridge where the fishermen used to like go across to get the fish back to the land or something it was all yeah Edward, but we went to like Scotland and, Wales and Dawson, so have you learned a lot would yeah, you say yeah loads of facts okay then are you ready for this are yes. you sure you've learned yes, I'm ready we are. For this. you're ready okay very good okay Let's do it. Who so probably... I hope I'm good at this. It's the mastermind theme. Okay. We have a quiz for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I hope I get Okay, an and it's, a, it's an easy one to start. The Tower of London is situated on the north bank of which famous river? The Thames. Edward, correct. Yes! The White Tower, which gives the castle its name, was built by William the Conqueror in which year? Um, um 1066. Not bad. John? Eleven six six. That's like the that's like the first series material. I'm already three years ago. We learned that. I learned that three years ago. I never, I had to refresh my mind. Ten seventy eight. Okay. Whoa, that's close. That's close. Final that's question. Close. How much does it cost for an adult to visit the Tower of London? I don't know. We got in there for free all access. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with twelve pounds. Twenty one pounds and forty five p. Whoa. It's expensive. It's actually crazy because a lot of our fans find out where we're filming and literally we're in the most we're in the middle of nowhere. Like so we went to Cheddar Gorge where they make like cheese and they have this whole tower. They have this whole mountain and there's all cheese inside because they store it in there. Our fans are like on. Go, but it's so crazy because when you're actually filming, you have so much fans staring at you while you're filming. It's like be quiet. Be and do quiet, you find that quiet. difficult? 
it's it's actually, you just have to overcome it and just because that's I always think you know when you're in, when you go to Universal and they go on the little train and people are filming movies and TV programs and everyone's all the tourists tracing crazy pictures. You've got to imagine like no matter if there was a fo- if there was a football st- crowd going crazy, you just got to do it and just focus. And the thing about it is on the on the first day we learn all the facts and the second day we have a celebrity guest and sometimes you might get a celebrity guest that doesn't know they don't say anything and you you have to like carry the whole thing and they'll be like hello. It's like are do you want to do you want to say Brian? anything? What? You oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Joe Schwash from EastEnders and stuff like that. Yeah, we had like Matt Johnson from this morning. You know that dude, and we had like um, who else? We had Stacey Solomon on, and we had everybody. Yeah, it was really good. So you're doing okay with the BBC? We asked. Yeah. So we asked. you've got this new series finished, and it comes out in January. And then I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, and you can confirm it, or you can deny it, or you can refuse to answer it. I was told that they asked you to do Strictly Come Dancing, but they didn't offer enough money. I don't Is that they, true? Every year they offer us to go on these shows, but I feel like yeah, they want us to do dancing on ice and everything. I feel like and I'm going to get, I'm I'm gonna have to get more more practice. I'm going to go into the local ballrooms and get we're dancing actually, with everyone. Well, I don't, I don't know the whole trick. I don't, I don't, know, about know, about we I don't know. I don't think we have. Have we? Anyway, but on, we were in Blackpool <laughs> in the ballroom. We we're doing. I, I learned how to do ballroom dancing. It's like it's like Edda was dancing to the side. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Can you dance, Derek? No. I don't know. I just feel like I don't know. I think know. you can dance. That's why you like jamming it in Eurovision, mm, yeah. rocking it. I feel like to get more, like more of those practice. I could become like a really good ballroom dancer, couldn't I, Edder? Yeah, we could, John. So Who tell knows? me, it's two years since you've done Eurovision. Yes. Are you missing it? Would you like to go back and do it again? You did it for two years. Come on, Eurovision got like the highest viewership in the UK and Ireland. It's such a it's such a surge of like energy. It's such a good vibe doing Eurovision. It's like because usually you have to go to country to launch, but literally on Eurovision, it's like. Whoa! You're like known in all these countries, and then you're no- known in countries that you don't even know you're known there. And then you go to that country, and there's people there that know you. So we do it again. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't Maybe think so? if you no. did it with us. No, I, I, I absolutely I'd love to do it with you. I'm so waiting for you too. I'm so waiting for you too. You could be like the DJ. You could be like, Yo, John, everywhere you at? It's death <laughs> I think ridiculous. we should get Niall Horan to represent Ireland. He will win. Yeah, I believe you're friendly with One Direction. Yeah, they're yeah, all I good. Niall came to our pantomime twice. The Cinderella one. When he was before One Direction? No, no it was, it was, it was what when, makes what, when What Makes You Beautiful was out. Yeah, oh, it, was, okay. it was all good. Yeah, it was cool. But like, I think... I'm really, have, I'm really excited about their new album. I think it comes out in a week or something. Yeah, and they, they have a song called Story of My Life. It's like different yeah, to really like their we other songs. It. Do you miss X Factor? I don't know. I know I think, it's Fido, I do, Fido, I do, I do, but I miss, I miss, do, you, do you watch it? Are you Dad. paying attention to what's going on? I don't ever get to properly see it, but I do. I, I think it was really great. And it was such a... It's such a... The thing about it is... But your vision, your vision is like... So cool, but it's such a it's cool show. All the LED screens and the whole vibe, and the mm. way you have to go through all the phases, and you do you just don't know anything. But Derek, do you remember when really we were on right X way. Factor and there was like yeah. some people, and it was all like, oh, John Edward, they can't sing. What's going on? What are they doing on stage? They're crazy. But I think me and John, we kind of overcome that whole situation. We kind of proven ourselves. Like we kind of. But it's really great. I want to. I want to sometime come back on the show and actually perform. Have they ever song. asked you back? No. Uh, like no. But isn't, it, isn't it five years since you appeared on it, nearly? Yeah. And they've never asked you back, not once? No. Should they always have guest artists back? And are you, does that make you angry? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I'm think okay. So. Like, we're, we're on, like, all the different X Factors, like, when we, in the different countries. They're always, like, they, they, like Germany and Australia. They're always, like, they're, they, they, they're even interested. But I don't know. I think, I think, I think it'd be good for me and John. I think I should, I should appear on The Voice. Yeah. <laughs> As a judge? And, and sing Pavarotti or something. Would you be a good judge? I think I would. I think because I listen to a lot of music. I listen to so much music. I was listening to like Thursday. Thurs- would you be very critical now if you were a judge? I wouldn't judge. be that critical. I just, I just know if they. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be critical. But I'd know, I'd I know. I know if they're and John, cool we, or not. We wouldn't give false hope. We tell it how it is. Give the direct. Facts. I just say what you have well, to do. Who's good out there at the I, moment? I, then I feel like I feel like who's good at the moment. I feel like Katy Perry is really talented. Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift. I feel like people who are likable, but people can relate to, and people who can people not just somebody who's so great and so amazing, but someone who's kind of on um. I, really, I don't know what do you think, Edward. Someone who has good vibes about them. Someone who has has, has something really like about them, and something that, that inspires people. They've got the X factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I'd love to see you as judges, because Louis says he's not going to do it yeah, next I, year. Would imagine you could sit in Louis' seat. <laughs> the two of you. We'd hang out. With Louis. Yeah, I know. No, yeah. He'd be gone, and you two could replace him. What do you think? <laughs> we'll talk to Louis about it. We'll say, "Hey, Louis. Do yeah. St- do you still talk to him? But think about it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We're, we're all still, cool still friends. No. Yeah, we're whatever. Our mom also. and him. They all like hang out in the Four Seasons. Have like. Fish and peas and, and <laughs> fish whatever, and they, peas. whatever they eat there. Yeah. Now, listen, uh, speaking of X Factor, apparently they are releasing a two-disc 
greatest hits album next month. I know, and we're not celebrate on Celebrate 10 years, and you're not on it. And by the way, Mary Burns isn't on it either. I and think, I actually think that's wrong. I think both of you should be on but it. But Derek... Because you're certainly the biggest thing ever to have come from X Factor. But Derek... Yeah, outside like, of One Direction, if you yeah, know what I mean. Yeah, I feel like I, think, I, think it's like I think it's like more... It's not even to do with the X Factor. I think it's more to do with like management and people are organising the CD. It's not... Because it's kind of like there's certain people are in certain management that they kind of like... Like you, me and John, we wouldn't be on the same circuit of diff- other contestants. I like I don't think they wouldn't even, would even have they wouldn't be able to get the rights to our. Well, listen, let me just go through the names. And, and at home, here's a little game you can play at home. See how many people you recognise from this list that are on from my X Factor. Leona Lewis, well, we might know her. One Direction, definitely yes. know who she is. Ollie Moores, yeah, yeah. JLS, yeah. Uh, little Mix, I would have had to be reminded. Alexandra Burke, James Arthur. Now, which one was James Arthur? Because I don't. He was last year's yeah. winner. Well, I wouldn't have remembered him. Uh, Rebecca Ferguson, no idea who that is. When was she, when was she on it? Don't know. Uh, Joe McEldry, I remember Joe McEldry. I, yeah, yeah, Joe, Matt yeah. Cardle, Diana Vickers, don't remember her. Amelia Lilly, no idea. Shane Ward, yeah, we remember him. Union J, well, they're on the go at the moment. I don't think they're that great. Misha B, yeah, I remember her. Lucy Spragan, no idea. Cheryl Lloyd, couldn't stand her. So there are some of the names that are on it. So Derek, you're very and disappointed. You would, Derek, Derek, I'm very disappointed right that you guys aren't on it and that Mary Byrne isn't on it. Derek, yeah, I know. The thing Mary about Byrne it is they're all with Sony and they're all with, they're all with like, um, they're all with so- Psycho. The Sony, so they're on the same record label. <clears throat> I think it's yeah, all good, so okay? I feel like um, the greatest hits album. So you think like it's a click, do you? I don't know, but I think I think if it's a complete But me and I, we've, ne- we've never, we've never, we've always done our own thing. We've never been like trying to you know, every year we've never appeared on X Factor, but we, it would be cool to appear on X Factor. We never actually have. But Derek, Derek, you know, it's about creating new platforms and not trying to like live off the X Factor and be like, oh, I did. I know, X I know that. I know that. And, and listen, you, you know what? You, 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 actually, you're bigger than that, and you're better than that because <laughs> you didn't win it, but you won it. I, like, I mean, you had the X Factor. You had something different that the other people didn't thanks, have, Derek. like ability. No, I'm not just saying it's a fact. I mean, the BBC wouldn't be employing you on a TV series. They wouldn't be increasing the number of programs in that series next year if it wasn't doing the business. That's just the reality of it. And I saw it today, and it is funny, and it is a kind of program that, as you said, anybody could watch, and you'd have a laugh watching it. That's the whole purpose of it, and it works on that level. And you've got a tour in Australia, isn't it, in Perth? Yeah, uh, it starts next week. And our pantomime, which is like. I've Jeremy- got to talk to you about the panto. Yeah, yeah. When to, 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 let's talk about Perth first. So you're going to Australia in November this month yeah yes. like, like in a week and a bit or two it's, it's, it's still like it's a tour but it's a promotional as well so we're doing like a lot of different TV shows as well we have we're, and we're performing in we're performing in the Edmore Theatre and that's where the Rolling, Rolling Stones yeah the Rolling Stones and we're, we're performing in Perth the first day is Perth and then we're going to we're doing like I think we're going to be doing like loads of different or different promos and TV stuff and recording stuff like MTV and stuff like that and then we're going to be um, Melbourne. in Melbourne and then we're going to it's, going to, it's really cool and who do, goes with you um, well it's me and John and then, then we have sound, and then we have crew, and then we have um, like there's a lot, lot of people there as well. That are people already in there. Australia. Mm. Yeah. And would you fly business class or first like, class or economy well, class? The first How time, the first time me and I decided to go, and we're on the TV shows, we actually just went normal. And then uh, that, we're on business, but I feel like you overeat. You eat too much stuff on the plane if you're in business or first. I feel like yeah, it's just I, like, a joke. I like just sleeping. But I you're like, hardly going to be on America's fattest <laughs> fairness. I like, I like, I like, I like more compact area. I like. I, like I don't, I don't like. The, I don't like the. Resp- I don't like. The, I just like chill now. I like. I don't. I like. I'd rather. Spend all that money as on long as I else. have a TV screen in front of me, I'm okay. But if there's no TV screen, it's like, whoa, what am I going to do for this flight? Mm. Now, so that's Australia, and you're going off promotional tour. Let's call it. That's what it is. There's and then tour- you've got the panto. Yes. Okay, so talk to me about the panto. So we did well, the panto first- for three years. It's such a big, massive get together. Everyone's so excited about Christmas. Families come every single year. But it's really good for me and John because it kind of it kind of gets you. It's like a boot camp of like acting and and getting better and at stage presence. Because usually when you're performing and singing songs, it's more out there, like whoa, what's up? But then acting's more reserved and it's more like you have to get your lines. You but it's so and really, this year we've so much lines we've so much more to learn this year it's crazy don't we John but it's really really good and we're doing all like the songs and it's gonna be we're, we're picking the bell and that's gonna be revealed on the on the um the Brent O'Connor show yeah on Saturday but yeah it's really great that we're doing four years because at Christmas you could be just sitting around and going what am I doing because everything comes to a shutdown all TV and radio and everything comes to a shutdown but it's good that you have something Derek, to do over Christmas about it, every single show has to be as good as your last show because like, like not everyone's going to see all the different shows and like shows. there's matinee shows and there's evening shows and there's shows. two shows a day so you have to keep like your good consistent you got to keep your energy levels up there and it's good because it's nice and it's not too long and not too short normally pantomimes go on for months but this one just goes on for 37 shows and it's really good because it's like the 
end of December to like the beginning of January. Mm-hmm. So it's like a boot camp to get yourself a game for the new year. <laughs> and it's you've got Linda Martin workout, starring workout, alongside yeah, you yeah, as well. Linda is. And you've got Stuart. Isn't Stuart producing it? Yes, yeah, Stuart. Yeah. He's done all your spotlight. They're doing the whole show. And we yeah. have a like hundred kids. Simon Delaney is directing it. Yes. See, and you've got all the kids. So g- good backup, good cast. What's it called? It's it- called Jedward Beauty and the Beast. And there's still tickets available. And it's a really great show. It's loads of laughs, jokes, and all around great thing to go it's to. It's going to be the Christmas. biggest panto in Ireland this year. It is. It was sold out the last three years. And Colin Farrell was there. Fucking records. And uh, oh, yeah. And like loads of other people go to it, don't they, John? Yeah. You're always like, this person's in tonight. Or like, it's always like, and then you're like, okay. I, I, it is exciting. It's a good, I think it's a really good way. Just, it's just a really cool thing to do. Except that the only thing that's not, that isn't amazing is you can't really crowd surf from the stage because there's like a gap. There's like an orchestra. Don't be crowd surfing. You can't jump over the orchestra yeah, exactly, and get yeah. into the crowd. Yeah. But so John sometimes. Jack, you going to be there? Yes. Absolutely. Be Perfect. I should have said, oh no, I won't. <laughs> oh yes, you will. <laughs> anyway, it's great to see the two of you and I have to say, I'm delighted you're still doing well. Thanks, And Derek. to be held with the begrudgers. But before we finish up, we're going to play one of your... Derek, I want to give a big shout to yeah. our loyal fans. I want to thank those our people that found fans. our dog. You guys are amazing. Good yeah, job for finding amazing. the dog. Toby. Toby, our dog. So thank you. I want to give a big shout out to our dog, Blaze, as well. She rocks. Okay, will you say hello then? Hang on a second now. Da, 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 da. It says, hi, Derek, you've probably got a million of these texts, but here we go anyway. Could... Please ask John and Edward, or both, to say a big hi to Eddie and Tawny, Stanley and Nace. Hello, Hello Eddie, Eddie and, and Tawny and Nace. and Nace. Hello, <laughs> hope you're having fun down there. And that comes from Ashling. By the way, I said at the top of the programme, only one of you was coming in. And now there are both of you in yeah, front of me. I was told one of you were in. sick. Who was sick? Uh, me, it's me, John. John, what I happened? Just, uh, yeah, I just, I, I ate like um, loads of cereal. I just ate loads of different things. I, did, I had loads of fish and stuff yesterday. I didn't feel sick, but yeah, it was all good. I just didn't feel good. But then I came in, I said I couldn't, Edda couldn't come here by himself. Like, come on, imagine if Edda on, just, we, we're kind of boring here. Come on, it's two of us together, it's much cooler. <laughs> Whatever, Why are John. you wearing dark glasses today? Because I'm channeling You look my, like Roy Orbison. Uh, yeah, and Ray Charles. And I'm just wearing glasses. Yeah, wearing glasses. Cause they're cool. Do you consider yourself superstars? No. no. Pop stars? I don't yeah. consider myself anything. I consider myself just a person who wants to go out in the world, create good vibes, and... Um, just be a leader. All right, well, listen, I wish you the best of luck. Now, Edward, you can introduce this track we're going to hear now. What's up, everyone? This is Luminous. And this is off our third album, Young Love. 